Recently I had to create a first person movement. It came out pretty nicely, so I thought why not share with you how I created it. Hello fantastic people, this is Peter and let's get straight to it. Here I have a simple scene with some extra props added using ProBuilder. They will help us test our movement as we build it. I start by creating new object and calling it player. I move it to a better place and I add to it character controller component. Most of the settings will work well, but because I like my levels to be a little bit claustrophobic, I change the radius to 0.4 that will allow the character to enter a little bit more narrow places. The camera will be handled using Cinemachine, so we have to install it now. You do it by going to Window, Package Manager, then we change the tab to Unity Registry and ultimately we search for Cinemachine. Of course, we need to click the install button. Now as a child of our player, we add Cinemachine camera. Then on that camera, we add two extra components. First one is the Cinemachine pan tilt. And the second one is Cinemachine input axis controller. You may not believe it, but that's all we have to do to control the camera. Let's test it now. Fantastic. If you don't like the default speed, you can simply change the gain of the pan and tilt in the input axis controller. I don't like the cursor flying around, so let's hide it and let's add simple crosshair. To do that, we can simply add the UI image. Then in the canvas settings, we can change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. Generally, I also like to increase the reference resolution. Now I change the pivot and position of the image. I do it using single click while also holding Shift and Alt. If you're not too familiar with how the UI and canvas work, you can have a look at this tutorial. And now I change the size and source of the image. And we have a simple crosshair. Let's now hide the cursor. As we'll have multiple scripts, I'm going to create a folder to store them. Then inside of it, I create a script and call it cursor controller. The script will be very simple. In the awake method, we simply change the lock state and visibility of the cursor. Now back in Unity, I assign the script to the crosshair. And now the cursor is gone exactly as we want it. Time for our FPS script. Let's call it FPS movement. As we're going to have quite a lot of fields, I start by creating the header for the speed values. Then I straight away add three fields for different speeds. One for walk, one for run and one for crouching. Then I add another header, this time for references. We are start with only two. One input action reference for the movement action and one for camera's transform, as we'll need to know in what direction it's looking. Well, I lied. We'll also need one for the character controller. We'll also need a private field to store the move input. As the character controller is on the same object, we can simply get it in the awake method. Most of the magic will happen in the update method. First, we'll need a method called handle movement. It will need the value of the move input, so let's store it first. Using events for the input is a good practice, so let's do that. In the onEnable method, we subscribe to the performed and cancelled event of our move action. We need to do both because as soon as the button is released, the input should change to zero, as of course we don't want our character moving then. The store movement input method will be very simple. We'll just grab the vector to value directly from the context and store it in the move input field. As we subscribed to the events on enable, it's a good practice to unsubscribe on disable. Now in our handle movement method, we need to get a direction in which we'll be moving. Transform has a convenient method called transform direction, which converts a direction vector from a local space to a world space. This sounds complicated, but the whole idea is pretty simple. You see, as a parameter, we provide a new vector free. This vector tells us about the direction based on the keys we are pressing. So left, right, up, down, but without any context in our scene so those directions are not tied to any particular object. Now when we use the camera transform dot transform direction, our parameter is converted to the left, right, 
front back of the camera transform. That means that our abstract left is now becoming the left of the camera. Then we of course normalize it to ensure that all the calculations we do later are correct. Now I add a variable for a current speed and then final calculated movement. Ultimately, I use the move method of the character controller, which will handle for me all the difficult stuff like collisions. I multiply the final move by delta time to ensure the speed is frame rate independent. Now in Unity we need to add the FPS movement script to our player object. To the camera transform reference we simply drag the player camera object. And for the move action we can use one of the default actions coming predefined with the URP template. If you don't see the individual actions, simply click the little button with the arrow. The move input action will be perfect. Fantastic! Our character moves as expected. It's time to add gravity. First in the update method, I store the information if the character is grounded. That means if it's touching the floor. And I of course need a new field to store this information. While we are in this part of the script, let's add some more fields. First one to store the vertical velocity. That means the speed in which the character is moving vertically. And then some fields related to jumping and falling. The jump force, gravity, and initial fall velocity. I have tested those values and they work well for me. The real gravity of 9.8 in this case seems for me a little bit too floaty. You may also be surprised that I'm using the initial fall velocity different than zero. The whole idea is that as soon as the character stops touching the ground, we'll change its velocity to some small negative value. That means it's pushed against the floor, preventing some weird behaviors like small jumps on stairs or slopes. Of course, we have to be also careful to not overdo it. If we do, well, as soon as the character stops touching the ground, it will just unrealistically snap down. Both gravity and the initial fall velocity should be negative as those forces pull us down. And we also need another action reference for the jump action. Now we need to subscribe and unsubscribe to that action and create a jump method which will actually initiate the jumping. And while we are on the matter of subscribing, you should also make sure to subscribe to my channel. The jump method will be pretty straightforward. If the character is grounded, we simply set the vertical velocity to the jump force. Now we also need a method to handle the gravity. If our character is still grounded, but its vertical velocity is negative, we change the vertical velocity to the initial fall velocity. Then every single frame, we add to the vertical velocity the value of gravity times time delta time. Now we need to execute our newly written code as part of the update method. The handle movement will use the calculated value in a moment, so make sure to add the handle gravity before it. Now as promised in the handle movement, let's change the Y component of the final move to vertical velocity. I just realized my camera is in the wrong position, so I'm adjusting it now. Its X and Z position should be exactly the same as players. However, the Y has to be a little bit higher, for example 0.6 of the unit. It's because we want it to behave as the eyes of the character, so obviously it should be somewhere closer to the top. Now we need to populate the jump action reference. There's a default action for that too. It starts looking awesome, but we have a little bug we need to fix. If we hit the ceiling with our head, we'll get stuck there for a short period of time. This is because our vertical velocity is not negative. Basically every frame is decreased a little bit, but before it falls below zero, we are floating in the air. Luckily for us, the move method of the character controller returns the information about collisions. Those are returned as bit flags. And to check the result, we need to use the bitwise end operator. This is a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, but the whole idea is that the end operator checks if the collisions flag dot above is included in the collisions. If so, it will return a number different than zero. 
the bitwise operations are not that complex, but they are quite unusual. If you would like me to prepare a tutorial about them, simply comment hashtag bits. Back to our script. If the above collision has been registered, we simply set the vertical velocity to our initial fall velocity. And that should resolve the problem. If you feel that the fall is a little bit too drastic, instead of using the initial fall velocity, you can use a smaller negative value. Even though I change it here to zero, please don't do it as it will introduce another bug. If you don't move horizontally, the character will fall as expected. But if you move, the character will stick to the ceiling. Now let's add changing character speed. First we need to add two references to the actions, one for crouching and one for sprinting. Then to boolean fields to check if the character is running or crouching. Then in the on enable and on disable we of course have to subscribe and unsubscribe to those actions. Then we need two methods to actually toggle those states. For crouching we simply change it to the opposite value. As we haven't subscribed to the console, this will change only when we actually press the button. For the sprinting we want to set the is running field to the context performed. As we subscribe to two different events on the action, it will return true only if the button has been pressed. If it has been released, the action will be cancelled, not performed, and thus the is running field will become false. Now let's move the methods to a better place and use the fields in the handle movement. Here we simply check if the character is crouching and if so we return the crouching speed. If not we check if the character is running if so, we return the running speed, otherwise we return the walk speed. Now we need to set the references of our crouch and sprint actions. You won't believe it, but conveniently they are again created for us. Fantastic! Everything works as expected. Now let's add crouching. Inside of our script, let's create a new section for the fields related to crouching. We need four fields. First one for the standing height, which will be exactly the same as we set on our character controller. Then the crouching height, which in my case will be one. Then the crouch transition speed, as I want it to be nice and smooth. And ultimately the camera offset, which will ensure that the camera is always at the right position. Now we need a regular private field to store the target height. First in our crouch method, we need to set the target height to the right height depending if we are standing or not. Let's do not forget to set the initial target height in the awake method. Now let's create a new method, handle crouch transition. First let's store a current height in the variable. Then if the difference between it and the target height is very small, let's assume no transition is needed and let's simply set the character controller height to the target height. If the difference is larger, we of course want to perform the transition. We calculate the new height using the mathf lerp. As a first parameter, we use our current height, then as the second the target height, and as the last one the crouch transition speed multiplied by the delta time. Then we of course need to set the height on the character controller. And because of that, we also need to change the center. We put it in the middle of the new height. This changes how the collisions are handled. Let's now put the camera in the right place. First we grab its local position. Then we calculate what should be the new one by decreasing the target height by the camera offset. That will ensure that the camera is always the same distance from the top of the character controller and then we lerp the value similarly to what we did with the height. Now we of course need to ensure that the method is called within our update method. And we have a beautiful crouching. Unfortunately, it turns out we have another little bug. The character can stand up even if something is directly above their head. Let's fix that now. Inside of our crouch method, let's add extra condition. If we are crouching and the character cannot stand up, let's simply don't do anything. Okay, but how do we check if we can stand up or not? 
Initially, I made a simple raycast from the center of the character controller, checking if directly above it, there's nothing we can hit. And it seemed to work well, but unfortunately around the edges of the colliders it didn't work as expected. The solution is pretty simple. We can simply change the regular raycast to the capsule cast. And now when we test, everything will work as expected. And that's all for today. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.